Hello and welcome to another video by Adrian Davey from Pure Electric. In this video series, I'm going to talk you through the basics of ring final circuit testing step by step. I'm also going to discuss some of the things that can go wrong in a ring final circuit and what you should look out for when testing. This will be especially useful when fault finding, as inspection and testing and fault finding are intrinsically linked. You cannot fully understand one without the other. To start, let's look at a basic ring final circuit with three sockets connected. Let's break this down into a simpler wiring diagram to understand by removing the neutral and CPC conductors so that we're just left with the line conductor. The first step in proving that you have a complete circuit is by testing that the line conductor is continuous all the way through the ring final circuit and that you do indeed have what we call a ring. While we are going through this video, I will be showing you where to put the low ohm resistance readings on the schedule of test results. This is an adapted BS7671 schedule of test results that I, with a little help from someone far more experienced than myself, have put together for first year apprentices to help them learn the basics of data collection and dead testing. This test sheet is available to all my subscribers, so please contact me through the comments on this video. And once you have subscribed, I will email this through to you as a PDF. We will start with testing the line conductor, which we call R1. And you will notice that all the resistance readings for the end-to-end -end measurements are little Rs. If you haven't seen it already, please watch video three of my inspection testing series on how a multifunction tester works, as this will help you to better understand the rest of the video series. You can watch that video by clicking the link in the corner of the screen now. When we connect the MFT into the little R1 circuit, if the circuit is complete, the electrons with their negative charge flow from the negative terminal around the circuit and are attracted back to the positive terminal. And the MFT can measure that flow and give us a reading, which in this example is 0.34 ohms. If there was a break in the circuit, for example, where a conductor has not been terminated correctly at the socket, then the electrons would not flow and the MFT would not have any electron flow passing through it to measure. On the Mega 1741, this would be represented by an out of range reading of greater than 99.9 .9 ohms. Before you start taking accessories off the wall and potentially wasting time and money, the first thing you need to check is that you have the test instrument set up and know the leads correctly. You'd be amazed at how often a simple user error is the cause of all the confusion. Again, if you haven't seen it already, my video on how an MFT works will talk you through the process. The link to that video is in the corner of the screen now. Once you have established that the meter is working correctly and that it's not user error, then you can start to consider the possibilities and investigate these one at a time, starting with the most logical and easiest to rectify. For example, is it a poor connection that needs tightening or is the termination clamped onto the non-conductive insulation rather than the conductive copper core? Is the neutral actually connected into the terminal or has it come out or snapped? Is it a misconnection and the conductors are connected into the wrong terminals? Or if you have exhausted all your options, then you may have to consider that there is potentially a break in the cable or the cable has been damaged in some way. Now, the latter is less likely to happen unless there's been any building or maintenance work going on recently or there are obvious signs of rodents. A lot of these can usually be found by testing the individual legs of the ring to find which two points the fault is between, as shown here. If your low ohm resistance tester is not registering a reading, then there must be a break in the cable. If there is an open circuit, the electrons cannot flow through that part of the circuit and the meter has nothing to measure. If we were to label these points one, two and three, then the fault would be between points one and two. Repair the fault with a Wago box or similar and use maintenance free connections if it is not in an easily accessible place like under a floor. Make sure that you retest the repaired circuit to prove that the repair has worked and is safe to use. As you can see, we've got a reading of 0.34 ohms on the MFT. And for the purpose of this video, we are going to say that our line conductor is 2.5 millimeters squared as it would be in a standard ring final circuit up to 100 meters squared. Appendix H in the on-site guide gives more information on this, along with table H2.1. And I suggest that you familiarize yourself with this. We can then record the reading of 0.34 onto the schedule of test results in the column for the line conductor, little r1. We then repeat this process for the neutral conductor, also known as little rn, 
And because it's the same size length and CSA of the line conductor, we are expecting almost the same result. Now, just like a runner on a track, the conductor on the inside of the bend will cover a slightly shorter distance. As your cable meanders left and right around your installation, they should nearly balance out. But as it may not be exact, there is a value given in 10.3.2 on the on-site guide of 0.05 ohms. If the resistance measurement that you are taking is not the same, give or take the 0.05 ohm tolerance, then you need to ask yourself why and begin fault finding. Chances are it's a loose connection or you are partly clamped on the insulation. So if you are getting a reading, but it is slightly higher than the other live conductor, the chances are it's slightly loose connection or you're partly clamped on the insulation or you've crushed the conductor reducing the CSA. Once we are satisfied that our readings are correct and within acceptable limits, we can then record the reading of 0.34 onto the schedule of test results in the neutral column marked RN. Continue with the circuit protective conductor or CPC, which we will call little r2. If the conductor is the same size and length, then the reading should be the same, give or take that 0.05 ohm tolerance that we discussed from the on-site guide. If you are using a circuit protective conductor with a smaller CSA, for example, as found in Twin and Earth, then you need to calculate your ratio for dividing the largest amount by the smallest amount, as shown in this formula, which is where the 1.67 times multiplier comes from. Hopefully the fact that you now know where this comes from will help you remember it throughout your course. So 0.34 ohms times 1.67 equals 0.57 ohms. As this example shows a 1.5 millimeter squared CPC, the reading of 0.57 is within the tolerance and goes onto the schedule of test results in the CPC column marked R2. Don't forget that if your CPC conductor is the same size and length as your line are neutral, the reading will be around the same. But if the difference is greater than that 0.05 ohm tolerance, you are back to fault finding to find out why. If the CPC is 1.5 millimeters squared, as it is in Twin and Earth, then you need to compare that reading to your calculated 1.67 times amount. And again, if it's not, you are fault finding. Do not proceed any further until you have found and rectified the fault, otherwise this will impact on every test that comes after this one. At this point, make sure you calculate the R1 and RN and the R1 and R2 using those values. On this basic form that I've put together, we are down here at the bottom. The two formula that you need to use are R1 plus RN divided by four and R1 plus R2 divided by four. If I then put the values from the schedule of test results into this formula, we have an R1 plus RN of 0.17 ohms and an R1 R2 of 0.23 ohms. This now tells us what value of resistance we should be expecting at each point on the ring final circuit that we are testing, unless it's a spur or there's an interconnecting fault. Without this key piece of information, you would have no idea if the ring was correctly installed, which we will discuss in the next video. Personally, I think that if you have electronic software, then there is no reason why the program could not have an additional test sheet with these formulas on. And as the values are entered into each end to end circuit, the calculated part of this sheet could be self populating and calculate it for you to save time. And it would save those loss of calculations. I'll mention this to Rob Corbett at Electroform and see what he can come up with, as I'm also hoping that Electroform will further lead the way by at least having a maximum R1 plus RN column to record the values in, just like I have on the schedule of test results that I've created, so that we can officially record the results. After all, we have to do these tests and record the results, so I don't understand why it's missing, and why it's missing is anyone's guess. In the meantime, you do still need to make a note of these calculations on your assessment test sheets. If you do not do this in your AM2 or 2391 inspection and testing exam, you may fail. If the schedule of test results you are using does not have a box to write this into, just write and label these values on the back or around the side, but it needs to be there clearly on the schedule of test results. One further thing that I suggest that you do, which I believe to be best practice and will potentially save you a lot of time and money further down the line, is to then measure the R1RN and the R1R2 at the board first while you are there, and have it connected in the figure of eight before you start working your way around the socket and finding out that you haven't connected or calculated the ring correctly. In my next video, I'll show you why it's so important to connect the ring into the fabled figure of eight and how you are fault finding by doing so.
Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you like this content and want to see more, then please like, share and subscribe to get this important message out there so that everyone can benefit. Again, if we all love, care and take individual responsibility for this industry, then our everyday world will be a much more positive place to be. Take care.